Everyone hear me? Yeah. So I've got to just to look out over the congregation. It's just fantastic to see you all again after uh, 10 weeks. An amazing 10 weeks it was too. It's uh, always good to be back in the midst of family, God's family, God's people, knowing that when we gather together like this, the Lord is at work and uh, working in our hearts and working among us. So great to be back. Now let's begin this morning with the Word of God and Psalm, one of my favourite Psalms actually, but it's a great call to worship, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before Him with joyful songs, know that the Lord is God, it is He who made us and we are His. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. How true and good is that. Let us pray together. Lord, we come together to experience express our gratitude and our thankfulness for who you are, Lord, for what you've done, Lord, and for what you will do. You are our creator. Lord, you're our sustainer. You're our redeemer. Hallelujah. Our loving redeemer. The universe, Lord, is in your hands. We're in your hands. And Lord, we come this morning to worship you. Lord, you're at the very centre of all that's happening here this morning. So we look to you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you would fill our praises. Lord, that you would heal our broken hearts. Lord, that you would grant us the joy of life, Lord, as we gather. And Lord, that we would indeed be built up in your most holy name. We ask these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So let's stand together, shall we now? And uh, me is going to teach us a new song this morning in preparation for the MPK graduation in a couple of weeks. So uh, let's let Eddie into this new one. Thanks, Leah. You're welcome, Simon. So as Simon said, in two weeks' time, the MPK Year 6s are graduating and Gumption will be leading us in worship, which will be so special. And we just think how lovely it would be if we could come alongside our youth and, and encourage them and support them and surprise them by knowing all of the words and the melodies of the song and just lifting the roof off this place. So we're going to teach it to you this morning. It's called Thankful. Let's do it. Put your hands I love to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to live.
Let me pray. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for your goodness, for your love. We thank you, Father, that you have given us a family in you, brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you, God, that your church is multi-generational. Lord God, that we have the babies and the elders and everything in between. Father, we thank you that we can look to our elders for wisdom in you. And we look to our young people for, you know, inspiration for the childlike faith and the resilience. Lord God, we thank you that you made us a community and you blessed us with an incredible, incredible community here at Mount Pleasant Baptist. We praise you for this family you have given us. We praise you for your love. And this morning, God, we lay our lives down afresh and say, have your way with us. We are yours, Lord. We thank you that you are ours.
light. We will go on the light. We wish you the Lord. We love you, Lord. Let's pray together. We're reading the book of Hebrews that Jesus is and was Yahweh, God in human flesh and blood, the author and the pioneer of our faith, and the one who makes us part of his family, the same family as he. And Jesus, we read in Hebrews that Jesus said this, or the book of the writer of the book of the Hebrews said this. So Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. And Jesus says, I will declare your name, Father, to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, Jesus says, here am I and the children you, Father, have given me. Because Jesus is speaking of you and me as his brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're in the very midst of our gathering here this morning. You're singing with us. You're leading our praises and declaring the Father's name. Yahweh, Amen. Yahweh the great I am, you are with us and you are for us, the very source of goodness, all goodness comes from you, Lord and your goodness overcomes all that's against us, your goodness overcomes evil, your goodness even breaks through the hardness of our own hearts. So Lord, we pray that you would indeed have your way among us. We know your goodness all the more this morning, breaking our hearts and freeing us to live the life that you've given us to live, the sons and daughters of Yahweh. We bless you, Lord. We praise you together this morning. And amen, and amen, and amen. amen. So please be seated. What a joy it is to worship the Lord together. Good morning again. And if you're visiting this morning, uh, it's just my privilege on behalf of the congregation to welcome you. It's great that you've been able to join us and that you're with us today. We have a connect point just out through the back doors there. So if you're new or just like to know more about what's going on in the life of the church, then there's an opportunity for you uh, to come along and you'll be welcome there and uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions that you might have at that point. Tea and coffee to the cafe will be open for takeaway and tea and coffee. Um, this is a new arrangement since I've been away so I believe it's been working well but we're still not running as normal so the floor is not quite the same still. But uh, at least something is happening and we're on the way. We're working through it all, so that's fantastic. So this morning, um, let's just, before we do, I think just look to the screens. There's a few announcements that might be helpful. Church, here's what's on in the life and ministry of our church. Hi Church, Christmas is fast approaching. That means it's almost time for Christmas hampers, except this year we're going to be doing things differently. You're going to be needing these flashy green bags to pack all the necessary items into. Consider the bag part of the gift. The bags can be purchased out in the foyer for just $5. Inside each bag, you'll find a checklist with all the products you'll need to fill the bag. Such products include Cadbury's Drinking Chocolate, Green's Pancake Mix, Aeroplane Jelly, 
and the gift that keeps on giving, fruit mince pies. Fill the bag with the items and check them off the list. It's just that simple. But wait, that's not all. You'll also find a card which you can write a personalised note to whoever receives your bag. We only ask that you refrain from religious wordings. Everyone can get involved. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Or if you feel like banding together with your friends or your connect group, you're more than welcome to. Be sure to bring everything back to the church packed in the bag by December 13th. Bye for now. Christmas is such a wonderful time of the year and we would love to include children in our Christmas celebrations. There's an opportunity for children to participate in our children's Christmas choir or a nativity play at either our Christmas Eve or Christmas Day services. Rehearsals will be at 10am on Sunday mornings in the coming weeks so please let Mim Hosking know if your child would like to be involved. You can contact Mim via the church office or email her on mim.hosking at mounties.org.au so you can receive more information. We hope your children will enjoy celebrating the wonderful news of Jesus' birth with our church family and friends this Christmas. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Christmas is fast approaching and that means it's time for the Kubi Christmas carols once again. It starts 5.30 on Saturday 12 December when we'll all be meeting down at Hargraves Park, Council Road in Kublup to host this wonderful event for our local community. But friends, to make this happen we need an army of volunteers. There will be all sorts of things to help with, set up, pack down, cooking the sausage sizzle, running a kids activity station, ushering, handing out songbooks and all sorts of things. And so if you'd like to help, Please sign up at the info point. There'll be a sheet there where you can sign up or email Michael at uh, michael.christy at mounties.org.au. A reminder, 5.30 on Saturday the 12th of December at Hargreaves Park. Merry Christmas! Soul to Soul is a dance ministry that reaches out into our community to connect dancers with followers of Christ, empowering and encouraging one another to love God, to grow in their faith and to become followers of Christ. On Saturday, the 28th of November at 3 p.m., Soul to Soul will be holding their annual showcase. This will be an opportunity for our dancers to perform the items they have learnt throughout the year. All are welcome to come and support the dancers. The showcase will be held at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in the auditorium at our Burragoon campus. If you would like to attend, please register through the link on the Mounties website at mounties.org.au forward slash showcase. That's what's coming up at church. If you'd like more information on any of these events or other things taking place in the life of the church, head to our website at mounties.org.au. See you next week. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's what some of the things that are coming up. Well, it's just fantastic to have Tony with us uh, today. Tony is from Sports Chaplaincy Australia. And he's going to be sharing with us in our missional link spot this morning. So just great to have you with us, Tony. And uh, we just so love this ministry. Tony is the WA Zone Overseer. So he's really responsible for what happens in WA at the moment for sports chaplaincy. And uh, we love the ministry at Mount Pleasant, as you know. There's been a lot of interest in the past. And, uh, you know, we've got um, Rod Linton, of course, is involved. We have a coordinator here. And uh, Shannon McCarthy, who's the chaplain for the West Coast Eagles women's AFL team. Um, I don't think she's here today. Apparently she's hurt her back. Uh, so she won't be with us. But I know there's a lot of interest in the church. And we love it because it connects in a natural way with our community, you know, our sports culture in, in Australia. So it's just a great ministry for us to be engaged in. And Tony just does a wonderful job. So, Tony, just great to have you with us. I wonder if you could just start by... Well, letting us know what sports chaplaincy is all about. Well, we've actually prepared something earlier. So if you look to the screens, we'll just get to see an encapsulation of sports chaplaincy and what it's about. Look to the screens. Do you love sport? Well, in Australia, 
you're not alone. Every year, over 12 million Australians participate in sporting activities. With 68% of Aussies saying they never or rarely attend church, and 80% agreeing that sport plays a significant part in everyday culture, sport is Australia's religion. In fact, there are over five times more sporting clubs in Australia than there are churches. And that's why local mission matters. At Sports Chaplaincy Australia, our vision is to place a chaplain in every sporting community because athletes at every level need the love and care of God. For over 30 years, Sports Chaplaincy Australia has been partnering with churches, providing the tools and support needed for successful local mission and helping to nurture athletes, mind, body and soul. And it's needed because the pressure to perform can hit clubs and athletes and even their families. Victory can lead to high expectations, while defeat can be soul-crushing, and both can tear teams apart. Success, failure, high expectations, and life issues impact physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. But amongst it all are our sports chaplains, engaging people with Christ's grace and mercy through personal relationship and conversation. They're listening to, ministering to, and caring for their local community. Because being a sports chaplain means holding a unique place in influencing culture. Each individual accredited sports chaplain reaches up to 500 people with the love of God. From players to coaches, board members to athletes' families, and right through to supporters, being a sports chaplain is local mission at its finest. And with Sports Chaplaincy Australia, your church can become the centre of your local community. Right now, over 3,000 sporting clubs around the country are asking for a chaplain. And with over 76,000 registered clubs nationwide, Australia needs more chaplains. So there's never been a better time for local mission. If you love sport, love Jesus and love people, partner with us and reach your local community with Sports Chaplaincy Australia. Together, let's take local mission to another level. Is that fantastic? What a great little DVD. It helps us with video, it helps us to get a bit of an overview. So Tony, why are you so passionate? Why should we be so passionate about this ministry? Simon, I think we as we saw in the in the video, Aussies love sport. Do we? Yeah. yeah. And we've got a whole group of people. Uh, you, know, you know, people who don't know Jesus, don't fellowship at a local church, belong to a sports club, and um, we, but we, um, if we want to reach them, um, we need to go and be there where they are. That, that's what a sports chaplain is. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, what what do sports chaplains actually do? Look, it's all about building relationship and being amongst the people. So, it's being at the club, helping with the sausage chisel. Um, being on the sidelines, talking with people, building relationships, um, building connection, and, and having conversations that matter. So, Tony, I'm glad to hear from you why you think this ministry is so important and so valued in our community. We did say in the, in the, in the montage there that um, we have sporting uh, clubs and associations asking us for chaplains. They value what we bring. They want pastoral care, and more and more sporting organisations are looking uh, to, to look after their people, to ensure the well-being that they see it as part of their duty of care, and they see sports chaplaincy as part of that puzzle piece in looking after their people. Um, in Perth, in the last 12 months, we've seen 15 uh, clubs with chaplains, new chaplains, and, and on average of 500 people, that's a lot of people who are now being impacted with the grace and mercy of Jesus. So that, that's, that's, that's our mission. No, that's great, Tony. Have you got any, perhaps, on-the-ground examples that you could share with us, the work of the sports chaplain? Yeah, look, I spoke to a, a, one of our chaplains recently, and um, he said, you know, it's amazing. You, 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 you get around, you meet people, you mix and mingle, but you never know when you're going to be called upon by somebody. When their wheels fall off in their lives, 
they called the chaplain and there was a young guy at a, at a footy club who ended up on the wrong side of the law. He was in lockup, and the police asked him who he wanted to, to, to talk to and he insisted the only person I will talk to, the only person I will talk to is my club chaplain. Um, you know, so that's the, the, the importance of relationships with people. Uh, when things go sour or wrong for them, there's a chaplain for them to go to and they do. And that's when the real conversations happen. So Tony, how can we find out more about sports chaplaincy and perhaps even get involved in some way? Yeah, look, um, you know, sports chaplaincy is about grassroots um, sport as much as it is about elite sports. So don't, every, nobody is disqualified. Everybody is qualified for this ministry. Um, my team and I, Owen, Larissa, uh, Rod Linton from, your, from this church, uh, will be out um, after the service. We have a table out the foyer. We would love for you to come and have a chat to us. Uh, if, even if you're just curious, uh, just come and have a chat to us. Otherwise, check out our website, sportschaplaincy.com.au. Sports um, but, um, yep, yeah, once we're gone, if, you, if something comes up and you want us to talk to someone, just check out Rod Linton. He's got contact uh, to Sports Chaplaincy here in WA. Yeah, that's great, Tony. Really appreciate that. So take the opportunity out the foyer after the service if you're, if you're interested. And uh, catch up with uh, Tony and Owen and Larissa. So Owen looks after South and Peels, who's the regional coordinator in the South. And um, Larissa, Larissa yeah, next year, the north. she's come from the East, yep. just arrived not long ago. Right. She's going to be the regional coordinator in the North and also having a state role as well, I right. believe, next year. So look forward to that, Tony. Just fantastic to have you with us this morning. Thanks we you. love the ministry. We love all that you're doing. You know what, we'd love to pray with you this morning right. uh, before you head down and uh, we'll catch up with you outside. So let's do that now. So Father, we do want to give you thanks, Lord, for all that you're doing in our community, in and through your people. And what a great opportunity this ministry is, Sports Chaplaincy, Lord, to be salt and light in the community. Lord, and in the various bodies and organisations, Lord, out there where so many people are engaged, Lord, at different levels, different ages, Lord, uh, across the families. And so, Lord, we pray for those that are engaged, Lord, that you grant them wisdom. Lord, give them leadership and understanding as they work among the people in the community. And also Tony and Owen and Larissa, we pray for them. We thank you, Lord, for what you put on their hearts and what they've been doing here in WA and will continue to do. So enable them, Lord, bless them, lead them, and may they continue, Lord, to bless our community in your name. And Lord, we too just want to thank you for everything that you're doing among us, your people, your church, Lord, in these days, these difficult days. Lord, and our hearts are that your kingdom would continue to break in. Lord, to every area of ministry, Lord, to every area of our community, Lord, every sphere of society, Lord, we pray for the inbreaking of your kingdom. Your kingdom come, Lord, your will be done on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. Lord, that's our hearts. And so, Lord, we pray down that line. That's how you taught us to pray. Lord, we also want to pray for those among us, Lord, that are unwell. Lord, they're travelling with various sicknesses. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. We pray for your healing hand, your healing touch, Lord, to be upon their lives. And Lord, we remember that there are, there are many and we remember them together this morning, different names on our hearts. And Lord, we remember our school leaders too. Lord, heading off uh, this week to celebrate, Lord, the end of school. Lord, we pray there for their protection. Lord, that your keeping hand would be upon them. Lord, even those, Lord, among us here that are heading out. Lord, we want, we want their safety. We pray for their safety. But, Lord, we want them also to have a good time. So, Lord, we pray for all the volunteers that are going out this week from among us even and other churches and other places, Lord, to help ensure the safety of these young ones. So bless them, strengthen them, and enable them as well, Lord, we pray. Lord, we think of our salty weekend coming up with the young adults and the youth camp coming up soon. Lord, we pray for these events, significant events, Lord, where you move and where you do your work. So we pray that you would prepare the way there. 
Lord, prepare the leaders. Lord, prepare the hearts of those that are coming. Lord, to enter into good, healthy friendships. And Lord, above all, to hear from you. Lord, we think of the Kubi Carols as well. Lord, just great to see the announcement this morning. Kubi Carols is underway this year. Great opportunity again to reach out into the community and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he's come and that he is indeed Yahweh on earth by his spirit even in these days. So Lord, bless that event too, we pray. And Lord, as we come now to give, Lord, we thank you that you bless each one of us, Lord, abundantly, with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and with financial resources. And as we come now to give, Lord, we pray that these resources would be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord, and the incoming of your kingdom on the earth. We ask these things in your wonderful name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. So thanks very much, Tony. Let's give Tony a round of applause. Tony. Opportunity now, I know many of you give by EFT, there's opportunity now to come forward and bring your offerings to the front here, uh, if that's the way that you'd like to give this morning.
this morning and honour all of our volunteers. Um, this morning before I left home I turned over the run sheet and I was surprised at the list of names on the back of the run sheet. So I started to add them up. Do you realise that there are over 30 volunteers just in this one room? That's before we count what's going on there for Keystone, what's happening in MPK. We are so blessed, aren't we? We are, we are so So this morning we're going to continue our sermon series, Knowing God, and, uh, and I get to talk about truth. What fun we're going to have here. <laughs> we could go on for a long time, couldn't we? There's a, there's a question up there in a minute. Uh, what is truth? Right, it's a question asked by Pilate of Jesus. Uh, I'm not sure that he was really after an answer. I think he was just speaking ironically. Because Pilate knew full well that truth wasn't the issue at stake in that moment. There was something else going on. Something that's far from truth. And then I thought, well, maybe we could, uh, we could have a philosophical discussion. We could seek out a definition of truth. Or we could just dig and see just how far that rabbit hole goes. But that's not our purpose this morning. Our purpose is here for a sermon. And I was reading, a, uh, listening to a podcast this week, and the speaker was saying that the purpose of a lecture is to gain information. The purpose of a meditation is to seek enlightenment. But the purpose of a sermon is to encourage God's people to open up their hearts and worship the Lord. Yeah. That's our purpose this morning. We're going to talk about truth for a little while, so that at the end we have the opportunity to open up our hearts to what the Lord wants to do in us, and to worship Him. So as we open up the Scriptures this morning, we're going to go to our text in 1 John chapter 4. So those of you who have your Bibles with you, feel free to open up to that. Uh, we'll find that knowing God involves receiving truth, it involves discerning lies, and most importantly, knowing the difference between the two. In the earlier weeks of this series, Dan, Nick and Peter have already mentioned that the Apostle John is writing to the believers in churches located close to the city of Ephesus. John is particularly interested to address the twin problems of false prophets and of heretical teaching. Let's hear what he says. This is uh, 1 John chapter 4, the first six verses. John writes to the people there and, and says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognise the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognise the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. In this passage, the Apostle John is quite clear in his instruction. 
There's no doubt about what he's saying. He's saying that we must discern between that which is true and that which is false. And we must do this, he says, because there are many false prophets have gone out into the world. The passing of nearly 2,000 years between when John wrote this letter and this morning when we're reading it has done nothing to diminish the importance of that warning. We do not have to look very far to see the impact of false prophets, do we? There are plenty of peddlers of myth. There are plenty of bearers of half-truths. And there are even those who specialise in the manufacture and the repetition of untruth. The Apostle is not warning us here, though, about any garden variety conspiracy theory. No. He's writing to a group of believers to warn them about a number of false teachers and prophets travelling between the various church communities. These people are dangerous. But how are they to know the difference? John asks, John's answer is unequivocal. There's no doubt about it. It's as unequivocal as his instruction. He says in verse 2, Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. There's your measuring stick. He's talking about the doctrine of the Incarnation. He's talking about how in the fullness of time and according to the purposes of God the Father, God the Son became human in the person of Jesus Christ. That's a mouthful, isn't it? But that's the truth of the matter. There are many beautiful statements in Scripture. However, few of them come close to the way that John spoke about the Incarnation in the first chapter of his Gospel. There he wrote, The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And you've all heard our good friend Peter talk about what that actually means. God came here, pitched his tent in our midst. But we know that the word that John is talking about there, who became flesh, is the very same word who was in the beginning. This word is the very same word who was with God. And this word is the very same word who is God. John says then that this is how we discern the truth. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. That spirit has its source in God. He's saying that we are to believe that teaching because it comes from God and therefore is the truth. He goes on to say, on the other hand though, there's always a counter-argument, isn't there? On the other hand, every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. According to John, Denial of the Incarnation is a sure sign of the spirit of the Antichrist. Or to put it in other words, it's a sure sign of everything that stands opposed to Jesus. The point is that everything that opposes Jesus is Antichrist. Of all the heresies that have plagued the Christian church through the centuries, there are none so dangerous as those that deny that God came in the flesh. To be more explicit, those heresies are dangerous precisely because they strike at the orthodox Christian understanding of salvation. And the simplest way of saying that is to paraphrase Athanasius. Athanasius is a third century theologian from Alexandria. And he points out very incisively that Jesus must be fully divine because no human being can offer a sacrifice which is acceptable to God. On the one hand, Jesus must be fully divine. But on the other hand, Jesus must be fully human. Otherwise, he cannot claim to be our representative. So what Athanasius is saying is that simultaneously, Jesus is fully divine and he is fully human. And from that point forward, that has been the orthodox confession of the nature of Christ. So how are we to know the truth of these things? 
John says, by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God, that's how we know these things. He repeats here, he's just repeating what he heard Jesus say to the group of the, the, the group of the disciples. Remember, Jesus says these words in John's Gospel. When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides us into all truth. He will not speak on his own. These are not his ideas. He will speak only what he hears. What's he hearing? He's hearing the Father and the Son talk about what they're doing on the earth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So that's our first point. We need to know the Spirit. But we also need to know the Spirit in you. In the first three verses of the passage, John's encouraging his readers to distinguish between hearing from the Spirit of God and hearing from the Spirit of the Antichrist. And he wants them... And he wants us, by the way. He wants his hearers to discern between truth and falsehood. Beginning in verse 4, however, John changes tact. And John extends that thought by saying, You are from God. You know that because the Spirit of God is within you. The Spirit of God confirms that you are God's child. And the Spirit of God informs you about your adoption into God's family. So although the first three verses are referring to the doctrine of the Incarnation, verse 4 is actually talking about adoption into God's family. The Apostle here, though, is not constructing a systematic theology. His purpose is pastoral. He's building on theological ideas, though. You see, John's purpose is pastoral because he wants to encourage his believers, that's you and that's me, he wants to encourage us to reject falsehood so that we might live in the light of the truth. Amen? Amen. He reminds his readers in verse 5 then that the Spirit of God is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who is in the world is simply another way of saying the spirit of Antichrist. Remember we've already said that Antichrist is everything that opposes Christ. That is the one who stands against Jesus. He goes on to say, these other voices are from the world. That's how we know who they are. They're from the world because they speak the world's language. Their purpose is only to tell the world what the world wants to hear. And what the world wants to hear is not the truth. Truth is hard to hear, isn't it? It's often difficult. You see, the problem arises because the truth is often unpalatable. It challenges us and it convicts us. Thus we are reluctant to come into the light of the truth. The promise of God, however is that all who receive the one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life, all those people who receive him will be set free from all that is false. The truth that will set us free is not an idea. The truth that will set us free is not some intellectual concept. The truth that will set us free is a person. The person of Jesus Christ. The carpenter from Nazareth, the one who was sent by God the Father. He is the truth. Jesus is the truth and that is the absolute centre of John's Gospel. And it's the same message here in his epistle. What he's saying is that you belong to God. You belong to the one who is in you because the one who is in you speaks the truth. The one in you will help you to overcome the lies of the wicked and those who are deceived. So we know the Spirit and we know the Spirit in us. 
but we are also to know who we are. Now it's really interesting here to note the order in which John advances his argument. What do I mean by that? Look at the order in the passage. First, there is the incarnation. Jesus is the truth. Secondly, he's talking about adoption. The Holy Spirit reminds us that we are God's children. Amen. And now what he's doing is he's going to draw upon apostolic authority. He says, we are from God. Amen. You better listen, guys, because we are from God. His point, of course, is not to draw attention to his own importance, but to redirect our attention to the importance of the message that he brings. And that message is, we are from God, for what reason? For your benefit. We have come to you for your benefit. You would do well, therefore, to listen, because God's people listen. But others who do not know God, the other ones who don't listen. You see, it's clear that John's addressing two issues here. He's speaking about the false teachers and prophets who were the reason for why he wrote the letter in the first instance. He says that those who preach, teach and prophesy falsehood do so because they do not listen to the apostolic teaching or instruction. Therefore, by their actions, you shall know that they are not from God. But on the other hand, John is saying, God's people do listen. Are you listening? Yes. Forgive me, I'm going to ask the question again. <laughs> are you listening? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> I'm not asking whether you're listening to me. I'm not asking. I'm not that important. All I'm doing is giving voice to the message that the Lord wants to bring in this morning. And I'm exhorting you, I'm begging you, to listen to the Lord Jesus. He's the truth. Listen to the Holy Spirit, the one who lives in you, because he lives in you for your benefit. Listen to what the Apostle John has to say, because in his own words, we are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. So our fourth point then is that we should know who you are. We should know who we are. And this is what the Apostle is saying to us. We should understand who we are. The people to whom John wrote were brothers and sisters in Christ. They were followers of the Lord Jesus. They, and he addressed them as dear friends. And he did so because there's little doubt that the Apostle knew many of the people who were going to be reading this letter. He knew them personally. But he also addresses that in, in verse 1, he refers to dear friends. In verse 4, he refers to dear children. And he's not being patronising here. He's not speaking down to these people. Nothing could be further from his mind. We've already seen how John draws attention to the way that the Holy Spirit confirms within us that we are God's children. And this is an incredibly important point for John, because in this one epistle, he mentions that 17 times. 17 times he says that we are God's children, in 15 different verses. That must mean that it's important. He goes on to add that God has also provided the means by which we might distinguish on, I've lost my place. <laughs> he goes on to add that God provided the means by which we might distinguish between those who are from God and those who are not from God. You see, we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, who, according to Jesus, is the Spirit of truth. He is the one who will guide us into all truth. So, with the help of the Holy Spirit, therefore, we will be able to discern what is true and what is false. In this way, we're able to discern between what is helpful and edifying from that which will be harmful and destructive for us as individuals and for us as a community. John's whole point is that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. The 
Holy Spirit is the one who will help us discern between truth and lies, between the things of God and the false teaching of those who do not come from God and do not know God. So as we come to an application to a close, we started this morning with the question, what is truth? The question is, what is truth? John's reply is completely unequivocal. He says, Jesus Christ, every spirit that acknowledges Jesus. John also replies, Holy Spirit. The Spirit indwells believers and is the Spirit of truth. So how do we know what is truth? Lean on Jesus Christ, lean on the Holy Spirit. The two persons of God who are in the world for our benefit. We are right back where we began this morning. Do you remember when we started, I said that the purpose of a sermon is to encourage believers to worship the Lord. What better way then to include by inviting Mia and the rest of the music team to come back to the platform. They're going to help us by leading us in worship of the Lord in song. And as the music team gets ready, allow me to share just one final thought with you. Our sermon series is Knowing God, and the topic this morning has been truth. I'm going to suggest to you that the truth is this. Jesus Christ is the reason that we're all here. We are his, and he is ours, because he gave himself so that we might be saved. Therefore, it's fitting to finish with his words. This is Jesus' prayer to his Father. He says, Father, would you sanctify them by the truth? Your word is truth. Father, sanctify us as we sing our praises for what you've done and what you are doing through your Son and your Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks so much. Um, I have a real sense of God's presence this morning. Um, I've been finding it difficult to sing because I'm, I'm a bit shaky. And I really just feel He wants to do something here today. Um, and so I'd like us to just take a moment now. Perhaps we can stand together, but um, just to quiet our minds and to listen to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit has to say to us this morning. And then we're going to sing together. So let's just take some some time to just listen to the Lord.
Father, we give you thanks for that peace in the room this morning. We give you thanks for the truth of the gospel message. We give you thanks, Father, that the enemy can't take what you've given to us. He can't touch that. Father, thank you for your presence with us this morning. If the Lord's spoken to you this morning, I encourage you to seek out one of the pastors, several of us around. Um, seek one out to pray with you, to help you, to talk with you, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, I'll be waiting down the front corner here. It would be my great privilege to pray with anyone who wants, who wants prayer. The service has finished. There are a couple of announcements I need to uh, bring to your attention. Just a reminder that the MPK volunteers, all those people who are MPK volunteers, you will have received an email. You should have responded to that email. There's a lunch in the park for you. And remember also, those who are members, formal members of our church, that you should have received an email about a new way in which we're going to conduct some of our church meetings. So we're going to do an online voting system. Uh, you will have an email with the, uh, with the appropriate links to do that as well. Next week, we have Sue Ford back, and Sue's going to be speaking to us about assurance. We look forward to Sue's message. As we go, go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Live in the light of his truth throughout this week and the weeks to come. Amen. Amen.